All right, have and have not fans. Hope everyone is doing well. I uh, got some videos pretty much branching off from the trailer breakdown video I did, which again, thank you all so much. That video is continuing to get 10,000 plus hits a day. And I saw the ad revenue it's bringing in and thank God it is because wow. I mean, this gives me pumped for the potential viewership that my videos will receive once the show comes back on uh, next month. So, you know, the more ad revenue, the better because I put money in savings. So if you want to help out, even if it's not financially, go ahead and just hit that like button, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon and select all that way. You don't miss out when I post content and follow me on social media. Links are in the description below. And if you want to donate, feel free to do so on PayPal or cash App. So Without further ado, you know, I feel like a majority of fans want Catherine Cryer to get out of prison or jail and not eventually go to prison, but I'm in the minority here, and it's not because I hate Catherine, but it just seems like a damn shame. So, um, with this, even before it was officially announced that this is the final season of the Haves and the Have Nots, people have been rooting for Catherine to get out for some time. Not me, just because of the fact that if Catherine was out of jail, what exactly does that do to the story? Now, you can make the argument that, well, Jeremy, if Catherine's out of jail, that doesn't necessarily mean she'd be back in charge of her estate because she handed that over to Hannah so the Salison family couldn't take it from Catherine. That makes sense. But whenever it comes to these situations where a particular character is in a circumstance where you, you look through your fan goggles of, oh, I love Catherine. She needs to get out of jail. Candace needs a happy ending. I want her to end up with Charles, you know, just to name a couple of examples there. Look at the elements of that character's present storyline and see if what kind of impact it has on the story. For example, if Catherine was out of jail, what exactly would be different? Seriously, what, what would be different? If nothing else, I feel like Catherine being out of jail would diminish Hannah's role because for the most part, Hannah's pretty much said, hey, I'm not doing anything unless I get, you know, the say so from Catherine Cryer, which makes sense. So to have Catherine pretty much is almost the equivalent of your teacher in school, you know, um, help, walking past your desk and helping you with a math question or something like that, you know, kind of looking over your shoulder because you have the assistant right there for any help you might need. All you need to do is ask a question and then boom, right there, they can give you the answer on the spot. But I feel like with Catherine not being available 24 seven for Hannah to access, it's really kind of forced her to come into her own. And remember, Hannah never even had to do all this research and all. She could have just stuck to her guns like the one meet, the first meeting she had with Don and John. You know, she really didn't make any decisions. Uh, and Marty, she didn't make any decisions. She said, hey, you know what? You're talking about um, these stocks and this information and these investments. I'm not signing anything until I get the go ahead from Catherine Cryer. I believe she would have done that whether or not she had studied or not. So I feel like Catherine in jail has made Hannah become even more independent, if you ask me. Uh, so we also know a couple of things. And like I said, there's only eight episodes. So I don't know where they're going with this. We know that uh, Mama Rose threatened, but we do know based off IMDb casting from a while ago that a relative of Little Lizzie is going to be, I think it was um, the actress that portrayed a character named Diamond from Orange is the New Black. I think that's the imdb reference that i had she's going to be in the same cell with Catherine, so this could be revenge she's like oh you're the mother of the man, the boy that ran my niece over okay i got you so i wonder or niece or cousin i wonder if that's going to go anywhere like i don't think Catherine's going to die per se but i do feel like you know we're getting some good character development out of Catherine. you know like that one girl who reminds her of amanda she's helping her out and she's going to help out the um one guard who used to be a law student based off Catherine's scholarship, but that's no longer applicable. Hence why he had to get this regular nine to five job. So I feel like if nothing else, Catherine in jail has shown a more positive. It's almost like we're seeing Catherine trying to make the best of the situation where I'm behind bars, but I'm going to do what I can to help other people. So I feel like in its own twisted way, Catherine is trying to do some good from um, prison. Well, the walls of the county jail compared to when she was out of jail, just, drinking and having threesomes so 
I think jail might be a good way to get her back in line. But just my opinion. I mean, sometimes justice needs to be served over happiness. Just saying. And Catherine, I know for a fact, is not the only character who deserves to be behind bars for the rest of her life. But we'll just have to wait and see how things play out. So thanks so much for tuning into the video. And like I said, I'm not a Catherine hater. I just don't think it's reasonable for her to be let out of jail because she murdered the DA in cold blood to defend a son who tried to kill her and basically wish death upon her to her face multiple times. So thanks so much for tuning in. Please share your thoughts below. Donate on PayPal or Cash App or at the very least, make sure you like and subscribe if you are new to the channel. And I will talk to you in the next video. And yes, even though she's still in jail, I still am disappointed that we most likely will never get the Captain Cry versus Mama Rose showdown. Oh, well.